In November 1947, the United Nations voted to partition the country. This plan marked off 55% of Palestine for a Jewish state, but the UN never explained how it could be a Jewish state when half the people in its territory were Palestinian. To nobody's surprise, Palestinians rejected the UN's plan, but it was accepted by the Zionist movement, which had worked for decades to turn Palestine into a Jewish state. So what brings you here today to support Palestinian rights? We as Jews are embarrassed what's happening there in the state of Israel, in the Jewish name. And what's your message to the people of Palestine? They shouldn't give up the struggle. They should continue to fight and not give up the struggle against, against the state of Israel because by the, by, by the end, Palestine will be free because this is truth will succeed by the end. What's your message to the people of Palestine? They should know. It's, we feel very shame what's going on there, especially they're doing everything in our name, in the name of Jews, in the name of the Torah, in the name of God. It's so shameful. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so that you always know we have brand new content so you won't miss a thing. Random things you need to know. I am your host, Theodore Herschel. Yes, the founder of the Zionist movement. I am here. If you guys are at BitChute, thank you for watching. If you guys are at Rumble or Gab or Minds, thank you for watching. If you guys are at YouTube, thank you for watching while we have the chance to bring you these episodes. You never know when this will be our last. You might be saying, Theodore Herschel, oh, what are you doing here? Are you concerned about what's going on in Israel? I am actually. I am. I am actually concerned about the ignorance uh, that exists in the world today. Many of you don't know how this whole thing started. You don't. You don't know. So I'm here to set the record straight. I want to tell you the tale of how all of this started. I'm going to use some examples that you all have given me, as well as history. There are some of you who are watching who are maybe Jewish or Israeli and you might you, you're gonna get really sensitive about some of the information I'm gonna have out here. You may want to turn it off now. Turn it off now. Go to another episode. Go to one about the little cute babies. That might be more of your speed. Because I'm going I might offend you with facts. Okay? Since you don't know much about me, probably I'm sure many of you have probably never heard of me. Jewish or non-Jewish, I am Theodore Herschel. I am the man who founded the Zionist movement. It is me. Well, we're going to skip ahead of my life. That's not important. I think Lorenzo has an episode. If you're at YouTube, he'll probably have the episode here so that you can see. Go there and you can learn more about Zionism and how I started and all that. Herschel visited Jerusalem for the first time in October 1998. He deliberately coordinated his visit with that of Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany to secure what he thought had been a prearranged with the aid of Reverend William Heckler, public and world power recognition of himself and Zionism. Herschel and Wilhelm II first met publicly October 29th at Mizra, Israel, near present day Holton, Israel. In 1902-03, Herschel was invited to give evidence before the British Royal Commission of, on Alien Immigration. His appearance brought him into close contact with members of the British government, particularly with Colonel Secretary Joseph Chamberlain, through whom he negotiated with the Egyptian government for a charter for the settlement of Jews in Arish in the Sinai Peninsula adjoining southern Palestine. The project was blocked and impacted by Lord Cromer, the Council General in Egypt. In 1903, Herschel attempted to obtain support for the Jewish homeland from Pope Pius X, and an idea broached at the Sixth Zionist Congress. Cardinal Raphael Mary Del Val uh, or, ordained that the church's policy was explained non possums on such matters, decreeing that. As long as the Jews denied the divinity of Christ, that Catholics could not make a declaration in their favor. At the same time, Joseph Chamberlain floated the idea of a Jewish colony in what is now Kenya. That plan became known as the Uganda Project, and Herschel presented it to the Sixth Zionist Congress in Basel in 1903, where a majority agreed to investigating this offer. The proposal faced start, a strong opposition, particularly from the Russian delegation who stormed out of the meeting. 
In 1905, the Seventh Zionist Congress, after investigations, decided to decline the British offer and firmly committed itself to Jewish homeland in Palestine. A homeland for the Jewish people in Palestine secured by public law. So let's make sure we recap. So Theodore Herschel is a the leader of the Zionist organization. He would like for Jews to have a homeland. He's already tried to negotiate with Kaiser Wilhelm II to talk to the Ottomans to go over there and give them uh, Israel. There's already Palestinians living there. It's already known as Palestine. So it's already happening, right? I many of you may say, no, nah, that's that's not what happened. <laughs> that's not what happened, Theodore. You've got it wrong. I know that's when you existed, but we didn't get it then. We were not able to move over there then. You're right. You're right. You're absolutely correct. That is not false. I do not. Di I, 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 I don't disagree with that. You are right. You all were not moving over there in large abundance. That comes after World War One. The Balfour Declaration was a public statement issued by the British government in 1917 during the First World War, announcing its support for the establishment of a national home for the Jewish people in Palestine, then an Ottoman region with a small minority of the Jewish population. The declaration was contained in a letter dated November 2, 1917, from the United Kingdom's Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour to Lord Rothschild, a leader of the British Jewish community for a transmission to the Zionist, Feder Zionist Federation of the Great Britain and Ireland. Now I ask this question, why would this man, Lord Balfour, need to send anything to Lord Rothschild? This would be Lord Lionel Walter Rothschild, second Baron Rothschild, he was the British banker. Why Why would he need to send him anything? Is is Lord Rothschild, the leader of Jews? I thought the leader of Jews was Moses or Noah or Jacob or Isaac. Who the hell is Lord Rothschild? Why is he the one who the letter needed to be sent to about getting, establishing a homeland for Jews? Why wasn't it sent to the Jews over in Palestine to tell them, hey, homeland is created for you guys there. Please get things prepared. Why was it sent to this this white man this I, I suppose he's white right oh he's British so why was it sent to this British Jewish man uh, from 1920 until 1948 the region of Palestine came under the terms of the League of Nations mandate policy for Palestine during the First World War from 1914 to 1918, an Arab uprising against the Ottoman rule and the British Empire's Egyptian expeditionary force drove the Ottoman Turks out of the Levant. The United Kingdom had agreed in the McMahon-Hussein correspondence that it would honor Arab correspondence if the Arabs revolted against the Ottoman Turks. Hmm. But in the end, the United Kingdom and France divided the area under the Sykes-Picot Agreement and an act of betrayal in the eyes of the Arabs. How about that? The British promised the Arabs that if they fought against the Ottomans, they would give them the land, and then they ended up giving the land to... Further complicating the issue was the Balfour Declaration of 1917 in which Britain promised its support for the establishment of a Jewish national home in Palestine at the war's end the British and French formed a joint occupied enemy territory administration in what had been Ottoman Syria. The British achieved legitimacy by obtaining a mandate from the League of Nations in June 1922. So the League of Nations tells Britain you can have mandatory policy over Palestine. They then go and do that and then they give a large portion of the land to the Jews. To the, I'm sorry, not even the Jews, the Zionists. Not even the Jews. There were already Jews living over there in Palestine who had nothing to do with Zionism. They gave them the land over them too. The Aliyah start, which are basically movements to move people from these areas, Jewish people from these areas in the West to Palestine, that started. An influx of people came. We had the Arab revolt against this, however, in 1936. This would be before World War II even started. 
So you're already having some issues. In 1930, you had a uh, Sheikh Is Adin Al Qasim arrived in Palestine from Syria and organized and established the Black Hand, an anti-Zionist and anti-British militant organization. So that's as early as 1930. You already have groups saying we don't want these people here. In 1921, there was rioting in Jaffa. Well, 100 people died in disturbance between Jewish left-wing protesters was followed by attacks by Arabs on Jews. So this, this does not start. This does not start with your 19, with your 2006 conflict. It does not start with your, with your fighting that happened recently. This actually starts here. Many of you may say, I don't believe any of this. This is all foolishness. What are you talking about? That never happened. Right, Palestinian mandate didn't happen. Well, do you believe this? To further make things worse, I guess I guess we can blame Mr. Adolf Hitler. You're saying, what? How did Adolf Hitler get in this? Well, there is the Havara Agreement. January 30th, 1933. Hitler becomes Germany's interim chancellor. The Third Reich has begun. <laughs> in this country on March 4th, attention is diverted by the inauguration of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. More power to you, President Roosevelt. The entire country's behind you, thrilled with hope and patriotism. But a group of Zionists at the same time was quietly negotiating an agreement with the Nazis to allow the immigration of German Jews and the transfer of their assets to Palestine. That deal, reported in August 1933, was the transfer agreement. Palestine, sparsely settled by Jews at the time, was radically changed as a result. German Jewish settlement of Palestine was, for a time, official Nazi policy. These photos of Jewish life in Palestine, along with a lengthy text, appeared in 1934 in the Berlin paper Der Angriff. The publisher, Hitler's propaganda minister, Josef Goebbels. A Nazi visits Palestine was the title of the multi-part series. A medal was struck by Goebbels in commemoration. On one side, the swastika. On the other, the Star of David. All right, I'm done now. Hitler demanded one concession for the transfer agreement, that the call for a boycott of the Reich raised by Jews here and elsewhere be rejected by the Zionists. The Zionists made that concession. And so, while Nazis were marching in Germany, and while Jews were marching here, diplomacy was running a more important story. In the Mediterranean, where the dream of a nation state for Jewish people came a step closer to reality. So the Zionists and the Nazis worked together to send Jews over, more Jews over to Palestine. Sounds like a bunch of people are just coming over. This just sounds like a, oh, and, and of course, you thank Hitler for you being over there, right? So many of you may be saying, well, you, you, you've, you've proven nothing. You've just thrown out some foolishness. This, this Havara agreement with Hitler. Hitler never did this to be kind. I know many of you may be going back. Now, now this is something that happens a lot. People go back. They go back and they say, no, 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 no. See, you're looking at the stuff from modern times. You gotta go back to that Bible. Now you're looking, Theodore, you look at the Bible, okay? Some people have told me that this story starts with Ishmael and Isaac. Ishmael and Isaac. So Ishmael and Isaac are both descendants of Abraham. Abraham is the prognator of the Jewish faith. Actually, the prognator of all faiths that come from the that area. So actually, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam all come from Abraham. The Abraham, so Abraham's kids are Isaac and Isaac and Isaac and Ishmael. Apparently, Ishmael was born of a handmaiden because Isaac and Sarah thought that they could not have a baby. And so Hagar is the mother of Ishmael. When Isaac is born, Isaac is the second born in Jewish customs at this time, or in Arab customs at this time, you gave your birthright to your firstborn, which meant that you gave whatever God blessed you with or your blessings to your firstborn. That meant that Ishmael would have got the birthright. Sarah, being jealous of Hagar, said that no, he should not get anything. Our child should get it. And she, and so Abraham, uh, 
kicked Ishmael and Hagar out of his life. He told them to go. However, God said that he would bless Ishmael where he would be able to multiply and be fruitful and have many nations. And thus, Ishmael is the prognator of the Arab people who became Muslims. And Isaac becomes the prognator of the people who become Jews. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Abraham also is promised to have the land of Canaan. You can see on the map here, Canaan is approximately this area, which would be, I guess, Israel. So he's promised that. But wouldn't that have been promised to Ishmael? So that means that the Muslims would have been promised that, right? But since there was some jealousy amongst these women, it's always a woman. And so there was some jealousy amongst the women that led to Abraham making a decision in favor of one woman over the other. His wife over his whore, I guess. Well, you gotta keep it real. I mean, you gotta look out for your main bitch, right? So I guess that makes sense, whatever. Then you get this part of the story where Jacob and Esau, who are Isaac's sons. Jacob is born first. Jacob, Esau is born first. Jacob comes out hanging on Esau's leg. Strange. Esau is born with red hair and red hair all over his body. Jacob is not born with that. Jacob is born with the ability of cunningness and the ability to make money. And he's kind of like a, you know, a, a merchant out there. He's making all the bread, bringing money into the family. While Esau is the hunter, he brings food. Isaac starts to go blind because he saw an angel or something. I don't know. God is always doing some strange things in these stories, but he saw an angel or something and made him blind. Next thing you know, he said he's going to give his, his riches and his fortunes and his goodies to his son, and he wants to give it to Esau because he's the firstborn. Apparently, Jacob tricks Esau, tells him that he'll give him some food for his birthright. Uh, Esau, thinking that this is all just playful banter, gives him the birthright for the food. He eats the food. Jacob goes then and, I don't know, covers himself in hair to trick his father into believing that he is Esau. Because remember, Esau is hairy. And then Jacob gives, Isaac gives the birthright, which is Israel, to Jacob. So the Jewish faith, apparently, and, and then Jacob creates the 12 tribes of Jacob, which is the 12 sons of Jacob, who eventually become the 12 tribes of Judah. That's where you get the Joseph and the amazing Technicolor dream coat. That's where you get the kingdom of Judah, which is right here. We'll get to that in a moment. But you see, this all starts with a deception. It starts with deception. It starts with jealousy. Even in the story of Jacob and Esau, it is the mother, the mother was promoting more division there too. So maybe the Jews are trying to tell us something about women. From this, you get the Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor dream coat and the Joseph story where the, the other 11 brothers put him, sold him into slavery. I, I don't understand this either. And he's the favorite. He doesn't get a birthright either. The, it ends up being the kingdom of Judah that is formed, as you see on the map. And that's where the Jews come from. That is where the Jews actually supposedly come from. The Jews have all that back heritage, but the Jews themselves come from here because they are also Israelites. Right. Why is it that, the, that you guys have, how about this Zionists? Why can't you just have Judah? So you all are from are, are Jews. Why can't you just have that little small part of Judah, which would be, you can still have it right here on the map and there you go. No, you gotta have the whole thing. I've read some things here today that have been kind of strange. We have stories starting with deceptions. People are claiming that they are a part of those deceptions. Their lineage comes from that. You even have people in America who are Jewish converts who are claiming that they have some ties to Israel. I, I don't understand. I'm very confused with what anti-Semitism is. Semitic is a language. It is spoken by Arabic people. People who are Ashkenazi are German Jews. You don't speak Semitic. You speak Yiddish, which is a language that you created in the 16th century. I don't understand. It's a, it's a mix. It's a mix of Turkish and, you know, German and stuff. But it's it's not it's not a Semitic language. Maybe it's an offshoot. It's not a Semitic language. I don't understand any of this. I'm very confused. Well, the Philistines were there, right? So Philistines, Palestine. That the Palestinians considered themselves to be descendants of the Philistines. Well, I, what are we talking about here, man? And in my opinion, based on everything that I've read here, what you all have told me, it sounds like these people who are there not only kicked off, kicked off 
Palestinians, Christians, they also kicked off other pious Jews. I'm a little confused. There are Jewish people who are against this. There are Haredi Jews who feel like, you, know, there's no, you all don't have any claim over there. You're not Jewish. Yeah, yeah. You're Zionist. Yeah, yeah. Zionist is against the God. Ask. And you want to destroy God okay, in Hashem. Ask. Go away. Go away. Ask. You're not Jewish. Zionists are not Jewish. Torah not, not belong to you. Not, not belong to you. I'm also going down here there, Rabbi. So. And did you all forget in the story where I said they had a Uganda plan? They had a plan to be in the area of Kenya in Africa and make that the homeland. They were considering it. If the place is supposed to be Jerusalem, why would you be considering any other places? Why would Kenya be on the table, Argentina on the play table? Why would any nation be on the table that's not Jerusalem if that is the true homeland? So I'm gonna think about, I'm gonna ask yourself, and if you're an origin person and that's that's your basis, then you should be actually on the side of Palestine. See you guys in the next one. Some, you people leave some messages in the comment section. Tell me, what do you think? Do you think? No, oh, Theodore Herschel, this is all stupid. None of this, this is stupid. This is dumb. The Jewish people are owed that area because in the Bible it says it's theirs through Abraham. Hey, well, if that's the case. We've already proven that there's some issues with that. You know, or, or are you a person looking at this and you're saying, I didn't know any of this. I didn't know that this was never really agreed upon by the Palestinian people. And yeah, none of these things were. The Palestinian people didn't, they were never brought to the table and asked by the United, by the League of Nations, hey, do you want Jewish people over there? Never that, never that. But, they, but when they came in, the Palestinians did push back. They did push back. They were like, no, you got to get out of here. The Arabs were not having it. And so people are saying it's the cause of the war. I don't see that. I see that there was some encroachment. I see that there was some land given to the Jewish people, and then they kept encroaching. Look at this map. Jesus Christ, for over the past, since 1947, this is what has been happening. And all of this is in the name of Isaac, Jacob, Abraham, in the name of Theodore Herschel, in the name of Zionism, in the name of things that have nothing to do with anything. If you're a person who's an origin person, and I'm assuming that you're standing with Palestine, and if you're a person who's just a religious person, then I already know where you stand because you're willing to believe that deception is okay as long as it's in your favor. And, and that tells me something about you. It tells me something about what you think and how you think about all of us. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. And this is something that you guys needed to know. Huh. Very interesting stuff here, man. Better radio.